uh, what I would like to uh, speak about is a general question of how to how to measure distance between two diffeomorphisms. Right. Uh, so uh, we have uh, two diffeomorphisms of a uh, manifold. So uh, all my manifolds will be closed unless I say differently. And uh, one would like uh, to consider a metric on some group of diffeomorphisms. So G will be a subgroup of the diffeomorphism. And uh, it, it turns out that uh, natural uh, kind of metric that one can c consider here is a uh, right invariant metric. So one can uh, measure only the distance from the identity diffeomorphism. And here are uh, some examples. Um, so the first group of examples comes from uh, taking the infimum of a certain uh, geometric functional over isotopies, connecting the identity to my diffeomorphism. So for example, one can take such an isotopy and take the average length of trajectory. So when one considers uh, the full diffeomorphism group, it uh, turns out uh, to be just identically zero, uh, this metric. But uh, if we consider a subgroup of diffeomorphisms that preserve so some volume form, it is rather easy to see that this is honestly a non-degenerate and right invariant metric. So uh, I, I will call it the L1 metric. And the second example comes from uh, symplectic geometry, where uh, uh, one can take the vector field which generates our isotopy, then uh, it is given by a time-dependent Hamiltonian. So essentially, one solves the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. And um, if our manifold is closed, let us normalize this Hamiltonian to have zero average, then a metric uh, introduced by Hofer in uh, the early 90s is uh, the following. So for any isotopy, <coughs> one measures the L, infi L infinity norm of uh, the Hamiltonian function, and one can integrate from zero to one. Right? I, I remind that uh, one takes uh, infimum over all isotopies. OK, and um, uh, uh, this was shown to be an uh, uh, honest non-degenerate norm b by Hofer, then Polterovich, and uh, finally by uh, Lalon Magdaff in complete generality. Uh, and uh, so uh, this is a non-degenerate metric. And it is also not only left invariant, but also oh, sorry, not only right invariant, but also left invariant. So it is a bi-invariant norm, which means that this is very uh, intrinsic somehow. And the non-degeneracy is roughly equivalent to Gromov's famous non-squeezing theorem. And a th third example, maybe maybe example two prime, I, I should say. Is uh, in the case of this one. Yeah. Right. Y yes, you're right. So, so here, G is the group of 
Hamiltonian diffeomorphisms of a simplex of Hamiltonian. It is really the same. So for S2, it is exactly the same for. Uh, 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 hmm? Say again? It's a bind variant matrix. Yes, this is okay. always a bind variant matrix. Uh, yes. But, uh, but this is not a bind variant matrix. This is only right and left. This is fine. And uh, mm, two, two prime is uh, the uh, contact case. So take a contact manifold, so psi is the kernel of a one form. And as Joe explained uh, yesterday, uh, th th this is uh, equivalent to, to saying that you know, the differential of alpha restricted to the kernel of alpha is a non-degenerate two form. Okay, and uh, in this case, one can play a very, very similar game. Uh, one can put uh, ht to be alpha of xt, where xt is the tangent vector field. And then, once again, one can uh, use the same formula. So let me call this sharp and star and say u star. And in fact, uh, this also gives a non-degenerate metric. And uh, yes, so, so I, I, I've been able to show this uh, 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 using work of uh, Osher and uh, uh, Speyler, uh, Speyth Müller. Second. Yes. So in this case, the group is the group of contactomorphisms of this contact manifold, well, the identity component, because I need the isotopy. Okay. Um, now, uh, the second uh, batch of examples uh, has to do with um, generation. So th these are the word norms or word metrics. So you, 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 you count something. So if uh, set S generates the group G, then one can take the uh, word norm of uh, phi to be the minimal amount of elements of S required to write it. OK, and um, so f for example, in the Hamiltonian case, uh, so uh, we know by result of uh, Banyaga uh, building on work of Thurston that uh, G is uh, a simple group. But and in particular, it is generated by commutators. So A, B. And, uh, and the same is true for the universal cover. So uh, one can have this commutator norm. And the second example is the following. Uh, note that ham uh, contains uh, the image of its group exponential map. So this is the autonomous diffeomorphism. So it is. You know, it is the union, union of all one parametric subgroups. OK, and c clearly this is a non-empty sub subset, and uh, ham is uh, simple. So ham is generated uh, by the autonomous. So one has the autonomous metric. And um, uh, there is a third batch of examples that is somehow between these two, in a way. So this is kind of the geometric part. This is the, so to say, algebraic part. And somewhere in between, there is um, the theory of quasimorphisms and also uh, spectral invariance, which I will probably mention a bit later. But by the way, there should be an E here. 
And um, now I, I would like to mm, give some uh, examples of uh, theorems and questions one can ask about these things and, and prove. Um, so, <laughs> for example, one can always ask uh, whether the diameter of a metric space is infinite or not. Uh, and uh, for one, uh, the diameter here is always infinite. And uh, for S2, the diameter here is infinite. And uh, if one takes the universal cover here, the diameter is infinite. But one, when one doesn't, then it's not really uh, uh, known in full generality. But for example, here is a sample theorem. So cam of S2 with the Hofer's metric has infinite diameter. So this is a theorem of Kolterovich from the late, <laughs> late 90s. <laughs> yes. So. Uh, well, I actually do want to, to do this because there is a follow-up question. <laughs> so uh, write S2 as a upper hemisphere union lower hemisphere. And on the upper hemisphere, consider this Hamiltonian, just positive with non-zero integral. And on the lower one, consider just the zero. So this gives us a function such that L, which is, you know, uh, the the, uh, the flow of this autonomous function, uh, is a quasi-geodesic. In particular, it goes to. So, and then um, there is a question of uh, Poltrovich and Kapovich from 2006, I think, uh, and it is the following. Is it true that the whole Hamiltonian group is contained in the R tube, so an R neighborhood around this L? This is uh, completely open. Uh, however, uh, a remark is that uh, uh, f for uh, the case of the L1 metric, the answer is no. In, in fact, uh, in this case, one can show that um, uh, ham of S2 is not contained in our tube around uh, the products of k autonomous ones uh, for all k. And um, so uh, also for the sphere. But inse if instead of the sphere we take something else, some other surface, one can uh, show results uh, uh, for Hofer's metric too. So c can I use this word? OK. <coughs> so, so here's a theorem of Poltrovich and myself. Uh, which says the following. So if M is the surface of genus 4 or maybe greater, uh, or uh, also we can cross this with any uh, uh, symplectically aspherical manifold, so in particular a spherical <laughs> manifold, mm. then uh, 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 we know the analog of that theorem for k equals 1. So, so ham of M is not contained in our tube around just the set of autonomous ones uh, for all R. And uh, uh, an open question, which I think is uh, very interesting, is uh, what about other K? So. What about products of two autonomous, for example? 
uh, here uh, Hofer no Hofer metric. So, uh, <laughs> so, so again, here uh, I, I I don't understand the question. Um, well, you, you see, uh, if you f f um, from this result, it follows that the word metric with respect to autonomous on S two is unbounded. So, uh, so this is this is a result, and okay, with uh, <laughs> with contact diffeomorphism groups, it is. Uh, uh, oh, oh, how, how much time do I have left? Mm, well, mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, 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 so let me say something about contact diffeomorphism groups, and then uh, maybe I will say some more about uh, those surfaces, Hofer geometry and surfaces. So, uh, in the contact case, it is very, very. Uh, curious that um, if one has a bi-invariant metric, then it cannot be fine. So this means that zero cannot be uh, an accumulation point of values. So this means you know that if uh, diffeomorphism is not trivial, then the metric is at least some constant, which is fixed. Um, and uh, m many metrics were were uh, developed, and some of them. Uh, are uh, quite clever counting metrics, word metrics like uh, in in here. <laughs> uh, it's kind of. Do I have a? Do I have a? Okay. <laughs> Now I understand uh, uh, those who said that you don't need to go to the gym. <laughs> so, um, and uh, some I involve uh, uh, certain uh, spectral invariants. Uh, but uh, what happens is that um, many. Uh, uh, I, I will get to this. I'll get to this I in a moment. Um, I will get this, uh, but uh, many of the things uh, involve uh, certain finite dimensional methods called generating functions, and it would be very, very interesting to try to generalize these things or uh, prove similar results with uh, Fleur theory, which, by the way, is uh, the method of proof of most theorems about uh, Hofer's metric. Uh, for example, this one. Uh, this one. Uh, uh, more particularly, one um, can consider uh, the following metaphor. So, uh, Hamiltonian diffeomorphism phi, or uh, more uh, more precisely, uh, uh, class of in the universal cover of the diffeomorphism group, corresponds to a function. So, let's say f. So Morse function on j just x, uh, usual finite dimensional manifold. And uh, here, uh, I probably need to say something like the graph of phi is transverse to the diagonal. <coughs> and uh, for Morse functions, we can consider uh, the system of vector spaces given by uh, sublevel sets of um, uh, of the f of the function right so and there are maps given by inclusions 
right? So when t prime is greater than t, there is an inclusion, so it induces a map and homology. And uh, all these maps uh, commute uh, functorially. So this kind of system is called a persistence module. And one can e extract all kinds of numerical invariants from these persistence modules that are stable under uh, small C0 deformations in F. And under this metaphor, uh, uh, C0 deformations of the function correspond to C0 small, uh, to uh, Hofer small deformations of the diffeomorphism. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to gi give an example of w one more uh, question, the proof of which would um, require more careful analysis of such persistence modules. And uh, th the question is as follows. Um, one knows by... Uh, uh, by a result of Brandenburski and Kedrach, um, that the free group on two generators embeds quasi isometrically, so isometrically up to a multiplicative and additive error, uh, into uh, the group ham of, say, sigma 4. 4 is not really important could be sigma 3. Uh, <coughs> and uh, here, here one takes uh, the word metric with respect to the set, generating set AB, just the two generators. And uh, the question is uh, whether an analog of the statement is true in Hofer's geometry. So uh, question, is it true that the free group on two generators embeds quasi-isometrically into ham of sigma 4. I forgot to say, here I'm taking the L1 metric, and here I would like to say to take uh, Hofer's metric. And know that since Hofer metric is bi invariant, one must take a bi invariant metric here. So one could, for example, take the word norm with respect to the same generating set, but uh, uh, conjugated. So the minimal conjugation invariant uh, set containing this. And um, th uh, so the proof of this theorem uh, required uh, studying certain multiplicities of uh, 